This is a radiator fan switch, something I showed in the previous episode when we went over the cooling system on this Honda S2000. Today it's specifically locating this switch, removing it, and testing it at home. Now locating the switch is easy enough. Just take a look at the radiator and what you want to look for are any harness connectors. So if you follow this wire loom, this is really just leading into the cooling fan. So it's not that, it's not that. Let me turn on a light. But ultimately, if you keep looking around, for this vehicle, it sits on the bottom driver's side. Now what you'll need to do is drain the coolant. So just go ahead and remove the drain. I'll splice in a video right now that we did a few days ago just showing what that looks like when she removed the drain plug. And then once all the fluid is removed from the radiator, right here you have a harness connector and there's a tab right here. You're going to press in the tab and pull from the body. Don't pull from the wire. Pull from the body. Okay. And this is a 24 millimeter, in my case, 24 millimeter adapter. And if you happen to need any tools, I'll have a few links in the description box below to Amazon. And here's the old switch. Now testing this switch is very, very easy. All that I have is a digital multimeter. This one is less than $20 off Amazon. You can do a number of tests, very easy to use. But continuity simply means two points make a connection. So if we take a look at all these symbols, right here it looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot. That's what you want. Okay, that's what you want to see on the meter. So if I touch the two leads, we have continuity. So the way that this switch works is once the coolant reaches around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, this makes a connection inside the switch and we should have continuity. So we need to heat this up and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But just to make this easier, I have two wires with alligator ends or alligator, alligator clips on the ends of them. So not necessary, just makes the job easier. I'm just placing one clip on the first prong and then another one on the second prong. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, something like this. And then one lead goes to red, one lead goes to black. Now we have no continuity and that makes sense, but we need to heat this up. Two ways you can do that. The first way is just boiling water on the stove, let it cool down just a touch, and place the switch inside the very, very hot water and just wait for the switch to warm up. Should not take too long. And eventually, if you do hear a continuity sound, you know the switch is good. So that's something I showed in the previous episode. Now today we're doing this just a little bit differently and also this is a lot faster than the water technique. And that's simply placing this in a vise. And I'm going to use a mini blowtorch. Again, I'll have links below. This is something for like creme brulees, and I just use this for odd things whenever I work on a car. It makes a very, very big difference. Now we're going to heat the end of the switch. Now if you, if you still have the O-ring or the rubber washer, make sure you remove it because it is going to melt and just heat it up. Now if this is working, you'll have continuity within a few seconds. So just heat it up. And certainly by now, we should have continuity. There's nothing, nothing going on here. So this switch is no longer working. So now we have the brand new switch. Hook up the leads and let's see what happens. There you go. There's your continuity. And you can actually hear the switch when it turns on and off. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up. I'll try it one more time. You can hear the switch. Certainly when you do this, you'll hear, it almost sounds like a relay turning on. And there you go. 
And it's really that simple. Just heat up the switch and see if you have continuity. The flip side is if you do not have a multimeter, you'll hear a clicking noise. And if you hear that click, chances are the switch is good. It's not a definite, but chances are the switch is good. If you do not hear that click, then you just need a new switch. These run for like 30 bucks, so they're not too bad. Now, once you reinstall this back in the vehicle, you need to refill the radiator with fluid. And if you need a guide on that, I'll include a link in the description box below. Can't do that right now because I'm still doing some work here on the, uh, on the Honda behind me. But that's all it takes. So do it yourself. Save some money. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.